Hello lovely people, how are you all doing today? I hope you are well. Uh, I am. I'm dog tired, <laughs> but what's new there? But I'm cracking on, I'm getting on with things. It's a really grotty day. You might not be able to tell in this image because I've got lights on everywhere, but I'm hoping the grottiness of the day is gonna help me, help me with today's video because I'm gonna tackle the bathroom window and because it's dull outside, I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing. Fingers crossed. So, it's high time I got on with refurbishing my bathroom window specifics in a second but just going back in time because this actually saves a lot of money a lot over 100 quid saving um so i thought yeah let me share this with you because it might be useful for one of you when i first moved in here i had to put all new windows in and obviously that's a huge expense but i got the flat cheap because it i mean it was a it was a dual upper it was a grotty, horrible, horrible flat when I bought it. Um, but the bones were good and I could see that the bones were good and I could see that the light, although it's not much today, was good. <clears throat> so I got it for a low price, which meant I had a nice chunky budget for doing the place up. Brilliant. And that's exactly what I intend to do when I move again this time. Anyway, so I had to put all the windows in. Big expense. Now, I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. Um, I used BAC, is it? Yeah, I think it's called BAC, which is a big national firm. They're all nationwide, they're all over the country. Part of the reason for picking them was because <clears throat> the windows came with a 20 year guarantee. Fantastic. Um, and what I was thinking about last night was these things with a really long, hopefully it's, it's jobs we will only do maybe once or twice on our homes. So my roof, for instance, it's a new roof, that's a 25 year guarantee. The windows, 20 year guarantee. But hopefully they last longer than that. What I'm getting around to saying is when I chose the company for the windows, I wanted to choose a company that had been around for ages, they're all over the country, good reputation. They may not have been the cheapest option, but it's just that thing with a really long-term guarantee, like 20, 25 years. I want to know as best I can, there are no guarantees, talking of guarantees, that that company is gonna be around in 20 years. Or say with the roof, at 24 years, if there's a breakdown of the roof, I want to know that I can go, Back to that company and that they will still exist in other words they're not some company that have only been going for two or three years and then two or three years later they fold it hasn't worked you've got your guarantee if something goes wrong in 18 years time you go back to that company they no longer exist you cut your guarantee then is pretty much worthless <clears throat> so yeah i went with bac and I'm glad because actually with the kitchen window, the, the, the handle, which is also the lock, the gear in that broke. <clears throat> so that was replaced for me absolutely free. Great, as it should be, 20 year guarantee. So, but <laughs> when I bought the windows, when I, because I looked at three different companies, I had three different companies come out and quote and they all left me their literature and you know, in terms of how do I want the windows to open and all that kind of stuff. But this is specifically about the bathroom window and having an opaque window so that you can't see through. We want privacy in our bathroom, don't we? I looked the other evening, I looked for my original paperwork and I've got all my original paperwork apart from my invoice, so I don't know the original prices. So I've looked up in today's prices if I was doing the same again. I decided to, um, with the bathroom window, I went for clear glass rather than frosted glass, like a sort of a sandblasted glass, because clear glass was so much cheaper. If I was doing it today, um, the the clear glass for the bathroom window would cost me about £150 for that window. If I went with frosted, it's getting on for 350 
there's a huge difference. It's nearly, it's nearly £200 difference just to have frosted glass. I'm going to frost it myself, as I did all those years ago. Um, today it's going to cost me £15 to frost it, so I'm going to save around about £170 by doing this myself. £170 quid is a huge saving. So I'm going to be frosting my window with a spray-on frost. I'm going to show you how to do this. I've got a couple of little hints and tips for you. You could also, you can buy film. It's like, um, sort of like sticky back plastic. You just sort of stick it over the whole window. I looked up, so this, this can was 15 pounds and a stick on uh, would cost about 10 pounds. So the stick on is a bit cheaper. I prefer the spray on because I've got friends who've got the stick on stuff and it does kind of peel up at the edges and look tatty. Um, but it's, you know, it's up to you. There are, there, you know, there are both possibilities. So yeah, um, for the sake of doing it myself, I'm going to save myself about 170 quid. Now, the reason I'm doing it, and I'll show you the window in a second, I'll explain it first, just in case we can't really get shots. The reason I'm doing it again is because I've somehow ended up with a bit of paint on the window, a couple of blobs of paint been annoying me for ages and to get them off I will use my razor blade scraper they'll come off perfectly easily but of course in getting them off with that I'm going to damage that frosting that I put on 20 odd years ago it seems like yesterday in some ways so I've got that paint on it but also, um, about a couple of years ago, I think it was now, I was going hard at it washing the frame. I was giving it a really good scrub. I don't know, I must have been in spring cleaning mood. I'm like, get the dirt out. And in doing that, I, I sort of scratched and pulled off some of the frosting. It is, it is all, it's wipeable, but gently, and I was using a scritchy to clean so I've kind of scuffed up it started to look tired and not perfect and it's just one more of this I, I've been meaning to do this for ages for myself because I hate ta I hate it when stuff is looking tatty so I've been meaning to do it for myself for ages but now of course with the whole move on the cards let's get it done so that once again there's not when when someone's viewing the property they don't they don't get put off by something they don't have in the back of their mind worries about like oh gosh that needs fixing and that needs fixing and that needs fixing and all these little things add up in their mind so that they say right we're going to knock 10 grand off the price even though it's not a 10 grand problem you know so yeah um that's what i want to I want to do it for me, but I also want to do it in terms of presenting the flat for when I come to sell. So I've got my razor blade scraper for the paint bit, and I've tried a couple of different things on the window already, which you'll see in a second, because I took it off with a, um, accidentally took bits off with the scripture around the edge, the washing up scripture. So I gave it a go with that, and, and it's brought some off, but my goodness, scrubbing and scrubbing bit of an effort so then I tried with a bit of wire wool came off straight away so I'm hoping that that's going to do the rest of the job today grade of wire wool um it's not soft it's not me it's between soft and medium if if we were grading not soft fine if we were grading wire wool from one to five one being really fine and one and five being really coarse this is about number two so it's, it's not fine, but it's not, it's definitely not coarse. So I've got my wire wool. Then for later on, I've got some newspaper, I've got masking tape, I've got cleaning cloth, good old cleaning cloth. I've got my rubbing alcohol ready. So these are all the bits I'm going to use and need today before I get to that final stage of actually refrosting it. So let's go and have this is going to be a squeeze in the bathroom. Let's see if I can fit you in and let me see if I can show you how it is at the moment with my different attempts at different bits of, of getting it, or the accidents and the bits of bobs of having a go at getting it off.
Okay, so hopefully the dullness of the day is, is helping. <laughs> we can actually see. So you can see where I've had a little goat. It was sort of around the edge where I was scrubbing and ended up lifting it off. And you can see the frame really needs a good clean. It's The dust is mounting up. Uh, so I will do that after I've got this off. And then we've got paint, paint blobs. So coming up, this is where I was having a go with the the kitchen scripture and you can see wow it's it it was getting there you can see oh, it was getting there it was getting there it was getting there but taking forever and then over here you can see <laughs> there's my view it's greening up this is the bit i did with the wire wall so obviously with the wire wall i'm going to be careful i need to use enough pressure to get all the the frosting off that was what it was like when it was Actually, you can see, I wonder if it'll pick up, but 20 years on, it is just starting to, it's like a crackle glaze. Maybe this is more obvious over here. Do you see how it's, it looks like really <laughs> this, uh, a riverbed that's dried out or <laughs> dry skin. Anyway, the point is, it looks, oh, let me step back, let me step back. I mean, obviously I've made it worse with, with these attempts up here but ignoring the top bits just going by the bottom you can see it's tashy and it needs sorting out so I'm going to get on now with the I wonder if I'm going to just I'm going to see if this works I'm going to balance you all here I've got the tripod here hang on, hang on let me see if I can set you up this this is going to be so awkward. I just don't think there's um, space for me to actually show you. I'll, I'll show you each stage after I've done it because me being here and trying to do it at the same time. Um, but will you be able to see anything? I'll have to spread over here. So oh, it needs a bit of effort. But I am, I am mindful, obviously I don't want to actually scratch the glass. Um, hence I've chosen a, the sort of slightly lighter, finer wire wall. Get the paint off too. So this should, in theory, this should pop under quite easily. Again, like just sort of trying to take my time with it. No hurry because again, I don't want to scratch the glass. Although, actually, I'm going to be frosting over it, so I think a little, a small scratch wouldn't show under the new frosting. But even so. Let's not, let's not scratch it if we can help it. So that is how I'm going to now proceed for the next however long. Um. <laughs> la la la, la la la. Actually, it shouldn't take too long. I think maybe take me sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. So let me get on with this and then I'll bring you back for the next stage. It's happening, finally. <laughs> it's only taken me, oh goodness me, a couple of years. There's a lesson in that though, isn't there, for us all. Sorry, I'm speaking with my back to you. I'm just saying that there's a lesson in it for us all, isn't there, about, you know, just not, don't let the jobs linger. Don't just do all these jobs because you're about to move out. Do them and enjoy them while you're living in your property. Maybe it's one of those things that, that we all need to sort of pencil into our diaries is that one weekend every month or even one Saturday every month we do the jobs which are slightly more than maintenance because obviously maintenance is just keeping things, keeping things going. This is a bit more than maintenance, I'm refurbishing, but 
but yeah maybe maybe just one Saturday a month and that helps us to keep on top of all these um, all these jobs in our homes like you know the wonky coat hook I always refer to that wonky coat hook because how many of us in our lifetimes have had a wonky coat hook and every time we put our coat on it or our keys when we come in or the dog's lead goes on the hook, whatever it is, how many times have we come in and go, oh, that blimmin' hook? Uh, <laughs> so so we, get the, we, we get the grump about the hook, you know, on a daily basis, but it takes us five years to fix it. <laughs> It's mad, isn't it, really? So, yeah, bit of effort. You can see, oh, look, my lovely, my lovely chimney stacks. That's where the crows sit. The crows sit on top of those chimney pots and cackle and caw at me as I'm in the other room in the kitchen with the window wide open when I'm working and I can hear them and, yeah, they make me giggle. <laughs> I see them playing on that roof over there. Right, right, I'm going to get on, I need to concentrate, I'm going to get on and then we'll do the next bit together. Right, <laughs> oh dear, even with a dull day, the light is a bit, a bit of an issue. So, that's great, so that's got all that old frosting off. I'm now left with a lot of dust of it and little, um, you know, just little tiny bits of the metal from the wire wool. Let's get rid of all of that. So I don't, I'm, I'm, my, my being there mucks around with the light. Right, good. So the next job is um, very boring. Now is my opportunity to get the frame scrubbed clean, scrub a dub dub. Obviously I need to open the window as well to do the entire window frame, but I'll take this opportunity now to really, really get that frame scrubbed clean within an inch of its life before I start thinking about the next step and actually getting this window refrosted. Yeah, getting there. Oh, the um, in terms of getting it off, that's probably taken about 20 minutes. Good, good hard scratching, maybe 15. Actually, no, because there was a bit with you. About 20 minutes, good hard scrubbing, a little bit of an upper body workout, get myself a bit warm on, on a grotty day. Right, come on, let's get scrubbing that frame. Ooh. <laughs> Goodness me, this is thoroughly warming me up today. So, I've, all I've done, I've literally just scrubbed the, the inner frame and the, sorry, the, the, you know, the outer frame and the window frame. Hang on, it tick. <laughs> yeah, it's... <sighs> This is such an awkward spot. I need to put the camera out there. Hello, birdie. Um, yeah, it's just scrubbed with soapy water, just dish soap, um, and then clean water, rinsed off. Drying it a little bit with, um, with one of my old cleaning tea towels because for the next stage I need it to be absolutely dry so I'm probably going to leave it a couple of hours now to air dry as well that I can actually shut that again now because we're not affecting that outside edge but yeah I want it absolutely thoroughly dry now, just before that next bit, this is where it's all about the prep, isn't it? Whew. Um, so the frame, I'm happy with the frame, great. But 
there will be a bit of residual soap possibly on the window despite giving it a rinse with um, clean water. So that's where I'm using the rubbing alcohol now to get off any of the last sort of smears of grease, soapiness, just all that last, any last residual, anything on the glass. Which means, in theory, this is all about giving me a really good key for when I come to do the frosting. Oh, poo, it's pongy. <laughs> Clean your house with vodka. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a drinker of spirits, but I do think, yeah, I feel like I might be one of those Garson. Uh, was it Garson, the cartoonist, a Garson mouse wife with, um, with a glass of vodka in my hand as I do it? Right. I'm happy with that. Am I happy with that? <laughs> oh, let it dry. I might, I might just do the whole thing one more time. Oopla, with the alcohol. No, I think that's enough actually. A bit of effort. Bit of effort. Wow. Hello, neighbours. <laughs> Goodness me! Before I get this frosted, if I need a pee pee, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cover myself in a big old cloak or something. Right. Let it all dry, and then I can start prepping to actually frost it. Yay! It's happening. <laughs> oh, just quickly while that's having a dry. Um, you can tell, I haven't, put, I haven't got any lights on at the moment, so you can see like deep shade here, but that, that, I just love that light that comes in from uh, the window. Um, oh, and yes, over my shoulders, all the books, lovely and clean and yay! I had so much fun putting them back. I rearranged them slightly to become like ones that I haven't looked at and handled for ages. They're lower down and anyway, all that. Now, just... What I wanted to say very quickly was all of this, this isn't about making the house perfect and whether I'm moving or not, I mean I'm moving, whether one was moving or not, this isn't about making everything absolutely perfect like it's some kind of new build. It's not, it's an old house, it creaks, it groans, it moves, um, it gets dusty, it gets grubby. I don't commit a huge amount of time to cleaning <laughs> because I'm too busy doing other stuff. I'm too busy having a life. Um, you know, so it's it's one of those things with like, say, all the annual spring cleaning stuff. Yeah, give everything a really good clean and then forget it for a year. Obviously, we do our weekly cleaning. But in terms of this window, yeah, it's not about trying to make things look brand new for when I come to sell. Um, this isn't a brand new property, it's an old property. This this house is 140 odd, it's 140, 145 years old, which actually by London standards is not that old, but it's an older property. You, no one coming to view a property like this expects, you know, perfection, or they shouldn't do. However, I do want to, like I was saying at the beginning, make th put things right which are looking, which are either broken or they're looking really tired and tatty because they've had 20 years of use. Because thinking ahead, just thinking about who, who is going to be my target audience for um, selling my property to, I feel like we should be facing that way a bit more um yeah who's my who is my target audience for selling this property to in all likelihood it's going to be a first time buyer a younger person first time buyer this is all they can afford and and, the, and this is proven with surveys etc etc first time buyers are of all the groups buying property, they're the most reluctant to do any work to a property. 
and I can I can understand that you know it's a huge commitment buying your first place is a huge commitment it's fantastically exciting it's so exciting I remember when I did it and it was it was just one of the happiest days of my life walking through the front door of my own property and not worrying about the vagaries of a landlord saying oh by the way I've decided to sell can you get out at the end of the month you know I've, I've lived here for four years and suddenly I've got it so oh yeah exciting but yeah when uh, with with first-time buyers it's it's a huge commitment to actually suddenly it's a lot of money you're committing to to then on top of that feel like you need to be fixing stuff of course there are exceptions to prove the rule i was one of them my first property was a doer upper but the vast majority of first-time buyers do not want doer uppers they want to move in they want to buy all their new furniture unpack their few bits and bobs that they've got and just get on with living straight away and going out and you know someone moving here i'm so happy for them because we're, we're so near the train station for them to bomb up and down to town for their work easy commuting and then the nightlife all our cafes and restaurants and pubs and bars they're going to be out every night having fun not in the flat sorting out <laughs> damaged frosting on a window or fixing x y and z that have anyway you get the point so good right i'm going to give that a little bit of time and then um then i'm going to get busy with the masking tape and finally get this window done yay <laughs> right well i'm just beginning to get the window masked up uh, but I thought I'd just stop and explain where I'm at because I'm, I'm nearly there with the newspaper but before I've done the newspaper right against the frame you can see I've masked off I don't know if you, how clearly will it show but I've masked all 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 the frame I've not tried to mask and do the newspaper at the same time because it would be far too fiddly. So all around, right next to the glass is masked off. And then it's much easier to then come along with, let me show you here, the newspaper. So you can see, I mean, the masking here is really messy. But if I was to try to get the, the newspaper, let me point it this way. I'm aware that I'm looking at other people's houses suddenly. Um, yeah, if I was to try and get the newspaper right in there and all masked all in one go, oh, it's just too fiddly. The reason I'm masking off with the newspaper, I'm making myself a little spraying cabinet because with the technique I'm using to avoid um, sort of lumpy patches or patches where there is more spray on the glass than in other areas I start every stroke of spray as it were off the window so I'll start my spraying stroke here and then once the once the spray is going I'll then move across and likewise when I get to this side I will come off the window and stop the spray on the newspaper and that way I should get a nice even finish but yeah getting this getting all the masking done a bit fiddly but it's one of those things isn't it with any DIY we do um, the prep doing the prep it's always the bit that takes longest but it's always the most important part and I've just remembered as well that I need to do a bit of a patch repair here because when the new roof went on as they were hammering the slates in <laughs> bang 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 yeah these a couple of where my where my studs are attached it just kind of popped the plaster off it's nothing structural it's literally from where they were banging on the roof just outside here to put slates on right let me get this finished and let's get spraying yay i'm ready to start spraying it hasn't all taken that long um yay <laughs> so Follow your instructions. I've actually just laid out some newspaper down here. I'm just going to have a little couple of quick test sprays just so I can get the feel of it. Um, how quickly is it coming out? How quickly do I need to move? Oh, sorry, I suddenly itchy. Do look at your instructions, um, it, especially in terms of things like how far away to spray it. So this is telling me 15 to 20 centimetres away from my what I'm aiming at. But the biggest thing, the biggest, biggest, biggest tip of all I can give anyone, whether you're 
doing frosting your windows or maybe you're going to spray some, paint some garden furniture maybe you're tarting some garden furniture that you've you know found at a car boot sale or whatever it is lots of thin layers it's better to end up do it going over the whole thing say four times with really thin layers to get a nice gentle even coating especially this on the window maybe on the garden furniture it wouldn't matter so much but thin layers because a we don't want that we don't want this paint to run when it goes on the window also we don't want blobs we don't want to think oh it's thick there thin there it is a really really bad idea bad shortcut to spray heavily and try to do it all in one go because you're just going to end up with yeah like i said runs blobs patchiness uh, so yeah do take your time with it and the other thing is ideally you would do something like this outdoors <laughs> well firstly the window is indoors and secondly i don't have any outdoors so what i will do is i'm going to get one coat on and then Oh, I've not got the window on vent setting. Uh, in the rest of the flat, I'm going to make sure all the windows are wide open all day and all night. Just any residual out of, get it out of the air. Right, so I'm going to start shaking. <laughs> shake for a couple of minutes. And then the other thing as well is when doing this, you probably find that every few seconds or so, stop to reshake. Don't, by the way, ever try and unblock un your nozzle with anything sharp. Don't be doing that. Right, I don't know whether it's going to be possible to demonstrate this. We'll see. Uh, but if not, I'll show you when I'm done. Use traffic noise and the rain's coming and I don't care just sitting in the window with the windows wide for some clean air I don't remember it oh sorry why are you way up there um I don't remember it being so horribly stinky when I did it first time around it's really vile and now I'm thinking you know what when I move if I do this in my new home I'm gonna use that film stuff <laughs> I ain't using the spray oh yeah i've been literally spray two ways come out of the room get air that's ridiculous anyway first coat's on oh come on breeze first coat is on and uh i'll show you in a sec and then I think I'm, it's going to be sort of three or four hours before I do another coat. So I might not even get to show you the finished product today. It might be in the, pardon me, in the next video. But let's see how far I've got today anyway. Well, there's sort of not much to see, is there? Because <laughs> you can't see out now. Um, it looks, towards the bottom, it looks like, oh my goodness, that's a big streak. It looks like, in my experience from doing it the previous time, it sort of dries a bit more even. And that is just the first coat. When I do the second coat, I will go up and down. But, yay! <laughs> Frosty window. It's clean frost. It's clean frost. <laughs> it does the job, doesn't it? No one can see me. That shadow there, that's, that's mucky on the outside of the window. I need to somehow clean my windows out there but it's underway yay chuffed with that cleaner and tidier than it was before right it's too stinky let's get out of here Ooh. all right lovelies <laughs> just 
get some of this air and I've got the front door open I've got the Velux in the hall open just move move air, move all around uh, yeah that's a bit of a shock actually this anyway it's underway and I think I think I might do one or two more coats if I do two more coats I won't be finishing till late tonight so either way or what I'll do is I'm going to say cheerio for now and then whew, next time I see next time I'm filming at home the next video is going to be from home because there's tons more to do first thing we'll do is we'll go in and see how the bathroom window turned out but I'm glad it's underway that's the main thing um, the worst part's done well I was going to say the worst part's done in terms of the prep the cleaning the masking <laughs> actually the stink is the worst part isn't it all right my lovelies i'll see you all again soon but in the meantime please look i know woofy dog <laughs> please look after yourselves and yeah have a think about um that uh, your calendar and your you know your wobbly coat hook we'll call it the wobbly coat hook and saying to yourself you know what yeah just one saturday a month throughout this whole year and I might be able to rattle off all these jobs which have been bugging me and winding me up for the last couple of years, five years even, ten years maybe. Go on, get fixing those little jobs <laughs> and enjoy living in your home. <sighs> Until the next one lovelies, cheerio. Phew, excuse my huffing and puffing, I've just run down the stairs and back up again. So I thought I'd just quickly show you again. This is half an hour later, and you can see how it's kind of it's kind of hard to see, isn't it? And we can still faintly see the roof, the building next door, but what you can see now is how, as it's drying out, how it evens out. So this here that looks like a dark band that I've missed—it's not—it's the—it's the building. So it's been drying for half an hour, and. I will, of course, I'll come back to it in another couple of hours when it's dried out a bit more, get another coat on, and then probably one more coat at midnight tonight, and then we're done. Yay! I'll get all the masking off, etc, etc, and show it to you in the next video. So now I really am going, ta-ra!